Bora TV. The world is thinking. So, what is the problem? Well, I genuinely think, in a very simple sense, that we can't see the wood for the trees. I know that David Willits yesterday mentioned the contribution of CERN to the international economy in terms of the World Wide Web. I think it's repeating, because it's often considered almost <laughs> vulgar in policy circles to mention the World Wide Web came out of CERN, because the contribution is so large. I mean, you, you, could, you could point to that and say there are the beginnings of e-commerce. We're talking trillions, not billions, into the world economy. Um, it's often said that it would have been invented somewhere else. Tim Berners-Lee doesn't agree. He said this, a place like CERN, where enthusiastic experts congregate from all over the world, creates a unique, innovative atmosphere in which the boundaries of technology are pushed as a matter of course. CERN's existence was critical to the start of the web. Um, one of the reasons for that is the freedom you get in research labs. Research labs are very cheap. CERN costs the UK less than 80 million per year in terms of subscription. But Tim Berners-Lee was essentially funded by that subscription. And I think this is quite amusing. It shows you the freedom you get at CERN. This is the original proposal that I was given by Tim Berners-Lee to the management for information management a proposal. This is the beginning of the World Wide Web. It's March 1989. His manager wrote vague but exciting on the top. <laughs> <laughs> Threw it back to him, but critically um, encouraged him and allowed him to continue. And I, I don't know what the contribution of that is to the world economy. Um, and I would say, of course, it's obvious. I, this is quite a strong statement. I actually believe it, though. I think curiosity-driven research is the most valuable of human pursuits. There's a very interesting quote I found from uh, Hendrik Casimir, who was a very famous theoretical physicist. He then became research director of Phillips Labs in the US, joint research director. And he appeared before a US congressional committee back in the 1960s and was challenged about the, the spending on blue skies R&D. And he said this to them, which is quite clear, and I'm sure it's correct. He said, I've heard statements that the role of academic research and innovation is slight. It's about the most blatant piece of nonsense it's been my misfortune to stumble upon. I think there is hardly any example of 20th century innovation which is not indebted in this way to basic scientific thought. Now, you can list anecdote after anecdote after anecdote. I'm not going to do that. I believe it's absolutely true. Let me just give you one which I found quite amusing. It's from Alexander Fleming. He said, when I woke up just after dawn on September 28, 1928, I certainly didn't plan to revolutionise all medicine by discovering the world's first antibiotic. And the, 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 the serendipity is, again, considered to be a rather vulgar thing to try and argue. I think it's considered unsophisticated. But time after time, I think Casimir's right. You see it. I could, I could give you a hundred examples.